Hello and welcome to Conversations. I'm your host Dawn and this podcast is just a lighthearted, easygoing show where we talk all things soul, spirit, and self-discovery. I just want to learn and grow and elevate in the best way possible and I want you to come with me. I'm looking forward to all these new people that I'm going to meet and possibly building a brand new soul tribe. If you are new here, welcome. I am so happy to have you. And if you are returning and have been following me, thank you so much. Welcome back. I appreciate you all. And I hope that you get so much out of this podcast. I just am so excited for what's to come. So if you're ready, here we go. So today's episode is with Sin and uh, short for Cindy, and she is on to talk about intuition and channeling and the conversation is magical. But I have to tell you, trying to do all of these changes and do a podcast during a Mercury retrograde is no joke. I wasn't even going to tell everybody this, but I have to because the audio is kind of hollow on my part. Sin sounds great. Um, But we ended up having to do a Zoom via her link because the way that I usually record my podcast was not working. So then we did a Zoom to make up for the one that wasn't working a week later and forgot to hit the record button. (laughs) So we did a third episode together. They all three ended up different, but I learned something new in every single one and they were all great and she was a good sport. And frankly, so was I. I just wanted to give you something to laugh about. You know, you have to take the the sweet with the salty, the good with the bad, the highs with the lows, and just go with it. So for anybody that's new, my audio usually doesn't sound like I am in the middle of a cave or talking into a can, but the conversation is what matters. So I hope you enjoy, and here we go. Okay, welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Sin. Welcome, Sin. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi, Dawn. Thank you so much. I am so, so excited to be here with you. <laughs> so tell everybody about you, why you're here and what you like to talk about. Yes, of course. So hello, everybody. My name is Sin. I am a psychic, spiritual teacher, and certified healing arts mentor. And we're here to talk about all things energy work and amplifying your intuition and tapping into your channeling psychic intuitive abilities. And channeling is so intriguing to me. Is it the same as being a psychic channeling and being a psychic? Are they the same? I would say yes. There's different terms. So people, depending on your preference, people call it intuitive abilities, channeling abilities, psychic abilities. I think not everybody is uh, a big fan of the word psychic. And at first I wasn't either because you think about psychic and all these things pop up as like fortune telling or somebody telling you your future and that's not really what it is. So um, it just depends on your preference, to be honest with you. I've used all the terms. So yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, because you grew up Christian, correct? Yes. So there's a lot of tabooness about talking about this kind of stuff. It's like it's witchcraft or something. And so it can make people really uncomfortable sometimes to dance around this type of topic. But in my opinion, it's just a different form of spirituality and different form of connecting to God, universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it. So I just, I hope that this opens people's eyes, that it's not something that's voodoo or, you know, you're not hexing people or casting spells. Um, It's more about your intuition. So when did you realize that you had the ability to do this? Yes, that's a great question. And I actually had my three clear abilities as a child. I remember being eight years old and I could see things, feel things deeply that weren't really physically there and hear conversations. And so I was really connected to the spiritual realm as a child and I didn't understand what that really was then. And so there was no way I could share that with my parents because they would probably think I was crazy. (laughs) So um, my sister and I would have conversations of like, wait, did you hear that? No, did you do? We would actually dream the same thing at the same time on, on, on days. And so we would talk about that, but it was never about what does this really mean? I had no idea what intuition was, what energy work was back then. And so it was such a no talking topic that we were really afraid to just discuss those things. So yeah. Are you and your sister twins? 
No, she's actually five years older than me, but she has her own gifts. And I know we get it from my mother. My mother's a spiritual healer in Christianity. And she is, oh my God, she knows exactly what she's doing. She's such a, she's so amazing. Um, She's actually my mentor. And we have these conversations. Like I tell her the time, mom, you are clairvoyant. Like you have that gift. And she'll be like, don't call me that. I'm like, okay, but it's still the same thing. Like, I just don't call you a psychic. It's still the same work. But we go back to the way we were raised not to tap into things that are not there. And I think that's great. There's, you know, there's, there's source, we're all connected to source. So if you ask me, there's a psychic in all of us, and everybody has the ability to connect with their psychic abilities with their channeling abilities, because you are an extension of source. So when we say things, it's woo woo, or it's, that's evil. And this is not we're actually creating separation from our connections from our spiritual self, because we are spiritual beings living a human experience. Right. Yeah. And we don't need any extra help with blocking. <laughs> I think, I think that comes easy. Um, so you had this as a little kid and then when did you decide to talk to people about it or come out of the spiritual closet? Oh my God. Coming out of the spiritual closet has been a journey in itself. A year and a half ago, you couldn't catch me calling myself a psychic or a channeler. Really it, that soon yeah, ago. Okay. Yeah. It was just not in my vocabulary, but every time I found myself every time explaining to my clients, hey, this isn't just Reiki, it's spiritual guidance, it's channel guidance. And so I always found myself kind of having to say that over and over and really asking them if they were open to receive that channel guidance, because that's important to me. Um, I was like, you know what, if I don't own this part of me, then I'm really just kind of disregarding this side of who I really am. And that can be scary because there's so much out there. People judge you and they're like, what? You're a psychic now who like your parents are Christian. And so it took a lot of courage to step into my spiritual gifts and own that. And it almost, it it brought me a lot more healing because as a child, I I suppressed so much of these gifts. And I've, I've worked with so many clients that have, have had the same experience. Oh my gosh. That had to have been so lonely as a little kid to feel like you're disconnected because people aren't like you. Yeah. I I felt like a weird child. I felt like I was the one who's not, who wasn't very social, but now that I'm able to connect with others through my work, I find that we've all had the same childhood. Really? So that's just a common thing for people with these kinds of gifts. Yeah, everybody has gifts and people tune into them in different ways. It's just about recognizing them within you. So um, when you have a safe space to have these conversations, you will see how you naturally open up and you might not be able to recognize your own gifts because you're not there looking or looking or searching for them, but other people can recognize them within you. So Oh, that's so special. And it's like, you have a brand new group of friends too, that you end up finding like your tribe. Oh yeah. All all, all the witches come out of the closet or (laughs) you kind of reunite and you're like, oh my God, this is everything I've been thinking and feeling. So it's just, it's, it's an eye opening journey, but it's, I wouldn't change it. Right. Well, I know that when we were talking earlier that you said something about how Reiki was kind of what really opened you up. Can you talk a little bit about, well, talk a lot about it. Cause I don't understand a lot of it. I know it's not really like a massage, like where they're actually touching you, their hands are kind of above, but, um, what brought you to go to a Reiki person and then what did they do? How does it work? Yeah. Great question. So I actually found myself in a period in my life where I was battling anxiety and depression And I was taking medications and wearing that label felt really heavy. I am a mother of two. So it required me to be active with my kids and the medication really served as a number. It only like helped kind of calm me down. And I was very lethargic. I was just feeling uninspired and motivated. And that brought a lot of guilt and shame because I felt like I wasn't really present for my kids. And one day I was at my local crystal shop and I had already been exploring crystals and spiritual tools. And I was talking to someone about what I was going through and they're like, well, maybe 
it's your energy. Maybe you have an unbalanced chakra. And so when I heard those words, I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, I can't tap into that. Like, you know, all these fears and beliefs came up. And so I took the card. I did what a Capricorn does. I go back and research everything. And I was like, (laughs) oh, energy work. Okay. And this is what it is. And I was like, interesting. But it still took me a couple of weeks to reach out and schedule my appointment because I was just so afraid And I was telling my sister, if I don't come out in an hour, you have to come get me. Here's my location. Like, that's how big my fear was. I was so desperate to feel better. I was so desperate to find anything that would really help me during that time. And so when I connected with my practitioner, I was like, I don't want to connect with, you know, spirits and stuff. I just want to, you know, this was recommended and I just want to feel better. That's what I wanted at the time. And she was like, no, it's fine. You're just going to be open to receiving. And I set an intention. I did a little prayer and I was like, if this is meant for me, then great. I'm open to receiving. And so I did. And after I got up from that Reiki table, my life completely changed. I was able to really feel calm and at peace within myself after years of feeling this heaviness in my chest. My anxiety wasn't there. And it was the first time that I could really hear the voice of my intuition. Wow. And they do they work just with chakras? Is that what they're doing? So each practitioner has their own style of healing. So it just really depends who you feel called to work with. I would say if you're somebody who hasn't experienced energy work, you want to make sure you're going to the right people that have the training that are certified and have the skills to really do that work. So each practitioner offers their own unique style of healing. Uh, chakra work is a combination of energy healing work. And so to my understanding, it is included in each session, but again, that could be separate in, in other practitioners. So it just depends what you're seeking and what you're looking for. Yeah. And I noticed that during COVID people were doing Reiki sessions online and I would see people just, you know, do, and I'm like, how in the world? Like, I'm not saying it's not real and you can't do it. I'm just saying for me, I was like, that seems weird. Like, can you, do you feel like you can do Reiki sessions over people just on the internet? On the internet, I'm not sure, but you can definitely Reiki the screen. Like Reiki, there's no time frame or cutoff with energy. So just like you and I are talking I work with clients virtually across the world and provide healing sessions to them in groups or one-to-one sessions. So energy is not constricted by time or space. You can reach anybody energetically across the globe. So I know what you're talking about. Like when you see TikTokers just raking the screen. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yes. Um, I think it's a fun way to showcase your work because you can't really unless the person is absolutely open to it, you can really record your work. I I find that it's sacred, it's intimate, and it requires you to be vulnerable and open. So who really wants to do that, right? But it's an invitation. I love to see those videos when they're just like raking and doing these movements. It's so fascinating to see the different styles of healing modalities that people have. It just depends on whatever teacher they went to, whoever they learned from. I think it has to be a calling. Like um, I've worked, I've had several mentors and I've learned so much from each of them. So I always encourage my own students, learn from different teachers. There's just not one teacher that's going to answer all your questions and give you all the tools, like learn from different people. And then you're going to create your own unique style of healing. Right. And you said that that is a form of channeling doing Reiki. So Reiki has its own consciousness. Reiki is just Reiki and knows where to go to treat somebody that has a blocked chakra or that needs Reiki healing in a specific area in their body. Now, channeling spiritual guidance and bringing in those gifts into your healing sessions just amplifies the overall healing in itself. So there's practitioners that focus just on Reiki. And then there's also, I've, I've gotten to know some incredible healers that don't even use Reiki. They actually use more of an intuitive style of healing. So it doesn't make it right or wrong. I would absolutely invite those that are listening to do their research and use their discernment, of course, when seeking um, support. But I love personally to see the different styles of energy healing that's out there. So when you do Reiki, are you accessing 
your own spirit guide? Are you accessing angels? Who are you, who are you connecting with when you do that? So my style of energy healing is a combination of psychic work and energy healing work. And so when I channel, I connect with not only my guides, but my clients' guides. Sometimes they have their own ancestors, their own angels come through. And so we blend that work together to serve our clients for their greater good. Okay. Um, And then you said that there's different types of uh, what did you say? Clairvoyance, clair- there's all different kinds. What are the different kinds of ways of channeling? Yeah. So if you're somebody who's interested in exploring more of your channeling abilities and how you can really bring your own gifts, your own abilities into your life, there's five main ways your intuition speaks to you. And so number one is clairvoyantly. Uh, this is through your third eye. You may experience receiving imagery or like video form, short video form of things or seeing things. Um, this is a one specific way. Another one is called clear audience. So this is your ability to hear things. And with this specific ability, you're going to hear things in your own inner dialogue. It's never going to be like an outside voice outside of you. You're going to hear your own internal thoughts in this way. There's uh, claircognizant, which I think most of us are. People who are claircognizant have a deep uh, connection with others um, with emotion. So they can deeply feel things. And so this can be a beautiful gift, but also having energetic boundaries where you're not taking on the emotions of others. I see this very commonly in therapists. (laughs) They use this gift and can connect very deeply with their with their clients. And it's so beautiful to watch, but also it's a great reminder to have your own energetic hygiene. And then there's clear uh, aliens, which is the ability to use your sense of smell. This is one of my strongest clairs and the one that I mainly use with when connecting with different multidimensional beings with angels, past loved ones, spirit. And so it's one of my favorite. Another favorite of mine is claircognizant, which is your deep knowing of things without having physical evidence. So I call this your psychic gift, which everybody has. If you're somebody who deeply just knows things with no evidence, or you get insight into something playing out in a specific way, but you just don't know how you just know, Mm -hmm. that's a way of connecting with your intuition. So if you've ever been through a situation where you're like, I knew that was going to happen. That's your intuition that was signaling to you this is going to happen like this. And so I find that most of us tend to really doubt that because we're like, no, I'm feeling crazy. There's nothing here, but right. then it ends up playing out in that way. So connecting with your own unique way, your intuition speaks to you will be key and will look different for everybody. Gosh, that's so interesting. So how do you, how do you smell? Like, what are you smelling when you have different angels and all that? What does that mean? Oh my gosh. I have a funny story actually, uh, with one of my clients and I remember I was working with him and he was on the Reiki table and his grandmother wanted to come through and make a connection. And so I automatically got hit with the whiff of like hot dogs, a smell of like microwaved hot dogs. (laughs) And (laughs) I was like, okay, this is interesting, but it was so clear and it just kind of took over the room. And I've learned over the years that any child guidance that comes through is not for me. It's for my clients. So it's important to remind yourself of that. Even when things don't make sense, like it's not for you, it's for to serve your sure. clients. So I was like, you're going to think this is crazy, but um, there's a strong sense of smell of microwaved hot dogs. And I have an imagery <laughs> of your grandmother here. And he burst into tears and laughter, like at the same time. And he was like, when we were little, that's all we ate as kids. My, my grandmother would give us microwaved hot dogs all the time. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Like you said, it didn't make sense for you, but you knew it was a message. And what if it wouldn't have been for him? Does that mean that it's a message that he might just not remember? Or does that mean that it's something for somebody else? The client always has the choice to resonate with a message or not our job as channelers as facilitators as people that hold the space is really to share any guidance that comes to and and sometimes most of the time it's not going to make sense to you so it's really important to just share that message and be like this may or may not resonate with you but this is what's coming through and so for him it was like 
his grandmother wanted to let him know that she was there in spirit with him. Oh my gosh, that's so special. And you had channeled a message for me on our first go around before we had all the, and you were like, I've got a message for you. And it did put that fear like, oh my gosh, uh, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. What kind of message? And because I assumed that it was something I was going to resonate with just because it was coming through you. Um, and it did. It was so crazy. Um, she had said, Sin told me that she was seeing a calendar and I have like my scheduling calendar. And she said, Friday and Sunday are standing out to her. And I was like, well, yeah. So Friday I had circled and Sunday I had circled. Um, those were two days that I was finishing my season finale of my podcast and changing it all over to spiritual after Sunday. Whoa. So that was just like, oh my <laughs> God, just validation that what I was doing was okay. You know, that you were seeing it. That made me feel so good. It was so interesting with that message. And I had a moment of like, okay, spirit, like a calendar and like those dates, those days being specifically um, highlighted. So I was like, okay, but the beautiful thing was like that beautiful message and reminder that you are on the right path and leaning into your own inner guidance and the way that you lead yourself is what's going to carry you through. So I think that was so special. And thank you for being so open to receiving that. Oh my gosh, I'm more than open. I want to hear all the messages. I mean, just to hear that things that I'm doing are being guided, that there's, I've got people or entities or whatever you call them around me because I pray a lot and I don't know, am I praying to God? Am I praying to angels? Do it spirit guides? I don't know what to say. So I'm just like, hey, everybody, <laughs> everybody help me. <laughs> and I don't need help. Like I'm not in dire circumstance, but you do just kind of want to know that they're around you and protecting you or guiding you. I don't know. It's just like, you want to feel that special bond Absolutely. And that's the beautiful thing about you being able to connect with your intuition and your own guidance. And I want for anybody that's listening, I want you to know that you can amplify your, your own abilities and gifts. It, it just depends how you, the term that you like using best, and you can connect with your spirit guides. You can receive their support and feel supported. And I think we all crave that. We all want to feel like, okay, somebody's got me at the end of the day, right? right? Right. How do you get tap into your inner channel? How do you amplify it? For me personally, I've gotten to a practice where I can put my own thoughts to the side and just become a channel. I channel through journaling. There's different ways that you can channel if you want to activate the channeler within you. Okay. So my first invitation would be to See yourself as a spiritual being through the lens of a spiritual being, not through your physical eyes, because your physical eyes, it's always going to want the evidence. It's always going to want you to do something extra in order to feel like you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. So one thing you can do is literally create your own sacred space for like five to 10 minutes and set an intention to connect with your intuition. And you can put your hands over your heart center, over your, your sacred, your tummy area, whatever feels more good to you. And you can set that beautiful intention to connect with yourself and your inner guidance and take a couple of deep breaths in. And then you're going to be open to just receiving without specifically trying to interpret anything or like, where's the message? Like, I need to get it now. It's almost like you're literally opening yourself up to connect with your intuition. That's going to be the first step. And this takes practice. Don't feel like you have to have, have it all figured out in one sitting, like do this over a period of 15 days and then share with us like how that looked for you. Um, another thing is creating time for stillness and for your own time reflection. So people channel through journaling. I love that because it, it allows me to see what's deep within my mind and how I'm really functioning in my mind. And if I'm feeling disconnected from my body and where my body is leading to, and so uh, creating time for stillness is important because we're so used to being busy, always on the go, always on our phones. And so yeah. taking a nature walk, raising your awareness to just really be present in the moment and connecting with your brain, your heart, and just allowing yourself to take like a quick reset will also be helpful. 
tuning in with yourself, writing your thoughts and connecting with your intuition as like, what am I feeling? What am I really sensing within me right now? Do my shoulders feel heavy? Is my jaw tense? Questions like that is going to help you open up a little bit more. When you journal, is it, do you treat it like a diary or how are, is it free flowing? Like you open the blank pages and if this isn't too personal, sorry, but I just like, what do you start writing? How do you start? So it depends on your preference. If you're somebody who is new at journaling, you're probably going to sit there and look at the blank page and be like, what am I supposed to write? (laughs) I would invite you to get curious as to how your body is feeling in the moment. How was your day? Reflect on the things that stood out to you in your day. I personally love this practice in the morning because it gives me just that intimate connection with myself. And now I just pick up my paper and journal, like my journaling starts on its own. So I actually channel through journaling and I can sense like a third party coming through and being like, Hey, it's okay to feel this way. It's okay to move through these fears, through these doubts. Like I can feel that support coming through, through writing. Oh, that's, and that's so easy. That's so easy for people, even if you're short on time, you know, just even putting a couple notes in your phone, you know, just to get some thoughts out there um, for people that are on a time constraint or just waking up a couple more minutes earlier than your kids, just to start your day with you, focusing on you. Starting your day with you and somehow ending your day with a self check-in as well just connecting with yourself, whether you're like in the shower, right? And just asking yourself, how am I feeling today? And just calling your energy back to your heart center and just Mm -hmm. taking a moment to connect. That's how you start really activating the channeler within you and learning how to use your intuition and really being able to start receiving your own inner guidance. Okay. And you mentioned earlier that you have a crystal shop, a store. So I used to have a crystal shop. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Now I just have a section when people want to come see me in person because I do offer online and in-person services. So there's a little corner that I use and I always ask my clients like go pick out a crystal intuitively and we use it during their session too. So it makes it really fun. Do you get into crystals then? Do you feel that they help the process? Absolutely. I actually teach my students how to work with crystal healing energy in my Reiki training. So it's so fun because you really learn to understand how to use crystal energy. And you can add this to your own work. Like if you're journaling or if you're meditating, you can place your favorite crystal over your heart center or in any area close to you and really connect with its energy. So it's so, so fun. That's interesting. And then like, there's a new moon that's coming, a big blue moon, whatever. Are you supposed to set them outside or to recharge them or whatever? Is that a real thing? Yes, it's actually real. Uh, There's different ways that you can cleanse and recharge your crystals. It just really depends on your own liking. So people put them out where the moon hits them. I used to do all the moon water, all the rituals. (laughs) I used to do that because it's so fun. And it's such an invitation for you to connect with your spirituality. It's such an invitation for you to connect with your own self and be like, get excited about something. So yes, if you feel like you want to put your crystals out by the window, do it. If you want, you know, for those crystals that you can wash, absolutely put them into salt water to recharge their energy. So yeah. So what's next for you? Do you want to write a book or anything? Or do you, do you have <laughs> Darn it. Oh my gosh. It's so <laughs> funny to share that. There's not too many details about that now, but you know, that's, that's, that's an idea that's been simmering through. So, oh my God. That's funny. This is take three and I <laughs> finally got a good question out there. That's hilarious. Well, good. I hope you do. You know, I think that's a really hard thing when I talk to people that are authors. It's like, I think everybody has a book in them, but to actually have the um, tolerance and patience to sit down and do it, it's a lot of work, but I hope you do it. I'll look forward to it. I'm going to remember you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, how can people find you if they want to get seek your services and what can you do for them? 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you for asking. If you love this conversation and you want to activate your own psychic gifts, your channeling gifts, your intuition, you can find me over at Uncommon Healing. I'm actually offering right now a free mini guide on how to activate your intuition, how to strengthen it and recognize its patterns and the unique way it speaks to you. It comes with a timeless mini Reiki energy reset that you can rewatch at any time. And it's going to show you how to really quiet an overactive mind so you can hear your inner guidance. So I would love if you would like to receive that. You can slide in my DMs and just message me intuition activator to receive it in your inbox. Share with me how it served you, what which one of your intuitive abilities is the strongest and which one you connect with most. I would love to connect with you in that way. Awesome. And I'll put all that in the show notes too. Um, so when you walk into a room, can you like pick up on the energies or do you have psychic things that you can see about people or do you turn it all off so that you can just have quiet mind? I turn it all off. I've learned to turn it off and turn it on when I'm doing work. It's so funny because people come up and they're like, what do you see? And I'm like, absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's how I would be. I would be that annoying person. Turn it back on really quick. Just <laughs> do, do something real quick. Figure out what's going on with me. Yeah, no, I've, I've learned to really respect that side of my work and just be like, okay, because you're going to learn to see like if you're really channeling and you're in a social gathering, is that the correct setting for the person to receive right. any information, right? And not that's not to say you're going to be sharing fear-based information because that's not my style of work, but any information that comes through is going to serve you for your greater good. And that sometimes isn't what you want to hear. It's going to be something that's going to help you change and grow and evolve. So yeah, I, that's yeah something that my students are like, you know, I'm channeling, I'm reading energy when I'm in, out and about when people are asking me and I'm like, it's going to drain you. So it's up to you yeah. You're really gonna learn how to turn it off and turn it back on when you're doing your work and being able to read for others and facilitate for them. Right. Oh, so interesting. Sin, I just learned so much. Thank you for the time. Obviously this took a lot of time with our take one, take two, take three, three is the magic number. So we did it. <laughs> I'll put everything in the show notes so people know how to find you. But thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really do appreciate it. Don, thank you so much. I had so much fun just on this whole topic. So thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. And I'll connect with you soon. Okay, sounds good. Bye-bye.